this season. It's probably been Florida State's most consistent pitcher game to game. I think she's comfortable in the circle. And the birthday girl, Deanna Jennings, in the box for Duke. Happy birthday to Deanna. And the lineups there for the Blue Devils. Jennings, Gold, Davidson, who has been, like Alex said, unbelievable this weekend at the plate. Vega, Burgess, Torres back behind the dish. Freelick at the DP spot. Baker and Tapia back at first. He is the nine-hole hitter. Jennings has had a hit in both games so far this weekend. She's a really good table setter for the Blue Devils. She really sets the tone and gets things going for the offense here for Duke, but it's the two, three, four hole hitters too that are so impressive, a lot of power, and can get it done in a multitude of ways. One hop, one pop, and a throw across. Issa Torres has been just so sure-handed on the year in her rookie campaign. Jennings can fly, but that ball hit too hard, and there's one away. Good start for Royalty. That's been the key for Lonnie Alameda this season. She said, we have got to stop getting the slow starts if we want to turn this thing around and be able to inch our way back into the top 10. I don't know if I should go on record to say this, but I think the team that comes out first here this afternoon is going to be the one to secure the victory by the end of the game. It's going to be all about setting the tone, getting momentum to go your way early and get the runs on the board as quickly as possible. What do you like about Royalty's game? Well, you take a look at her scouting report right there in the bottom left corner of your screen. She's going to be in the mid-60 range. She's got a rise ball to both sides of the plate, and she's able to throw inside, which to be good in the circle, competitive, and get people out at this level, especially with where the offense is now in today's game, it's so crucial to be able to establish that inside corner early on. Royalty actually appeared yesterday very, very briefly, and I mean eight total pitches. As the Knowles tried to piece things together, we talked about the chess match from Lonnie Alameda and Marissa Young. Both coaches have gone with a starter, replaced them with their secondary pitcher, their second ace, and then have to go on back to the starter. Royalty yesterday trying to have a different look, didn't work out, and so the Knowles went back to Reed to shut things down. 2-1 pitch, sky a mile high. Waycaser calls off Flaherty. Two away for Royalty. And I want to elaborate a little bit more on that point, Aria, because that is, I, I think, the question with where the game is right now. We talk so much about having information and how much information and data these athletes and coaches have, but it, it's always the question of, do you go with the numbers or do you go with your gut, right? And I think the numbers told both coaches, both Friday night for Duke and then yesterday for Florida State, when it was time to make that pitching change, but then you had to go back to your starter because it was kind of that gut feeling of what you were getting in the circle. No doubt, and that's where it starts, right? It's in the circle for whatever softball team that you want to look at. And in the circle, they've had a tough time with Claire Davidson. All weekend long, four hits, five RBIs, two extra base hits. Got to 100 career hits earlier this weekend. You've got someone that could be one of the front runners for ACC Player of the Year. Claire Davidson is so good. I, I've loved watching her compete so far this season. And Definitely made her way throughout her career. Getting better and better. 3-0 and is Royalty pitching Davidson carefully. Ask Marissa Young before today's game, who has stepped up this weekend? As you see what she's been able to do in Durham. She said, I think Claire Davidson on this stage took another step forward. She mentioned Kelly Torres behind the dish. We'll talk about her and her defensive prowess. But Davidson's going to be the leader of this Duke team. Jayla Wright, who will be in the circle for the Blue Devils as well, and the Knowles bat. She pitched well in front of a big crowd on Friday. Lifted, foul going to be tough for Beecham to range over. It drops in, foul ball, out of harm's way for Duke. There are Davidson's numbers, you saw them. It's robust, 455. That doesn't grow on trees. You got power, you got speed. You've been impressed with her ability to play to all fields. That's what I love most. She hits to the big part of the park and both sides of the field. Jam shot, gonna be tough. Torres ranging over. And the side is Riggs in the country, the best ERA in the ACC. 
And then look at those ratios too. Less than 10 walks on the year, over 60 strikeouts. That's pretty good. All she did Friday was throw five in the third innings of one run ball. Two walks, four strikeouts on 89 pitches. And this lineup the Knolls are going with includes Janai Kerr. That's the difference from game one. When Wright last saw it, you see the nine on your screen. Harding has been the star of the weekend for FSU with the plate. Talk about importance doing it up and down your lineup too. Kaylee Harding had been kind of quiet with the bat as of late, but really got things going yesterday in the game. A couple of doubles, some really clutch swings from Harding, who fans like to refer to as Ocho. I love the nicknames too that these players get throughout their careers and the way it carries with them. It's, it's fun. Kaylee Mudd showing a patient eye at the plate. This is her second view of right on the weekend. Smokes it up a box, base hit, Kaylee Munch. Starts things off with a bang for Florida State. The energy in that dugout. You see the retro uniforms, the classic golds from the 80s, back when Joanne Graff was reigning supreme <laughs> here in Tallahassee. It's a smooth look, isn't it? Looking good, I love it. Sunday golds, just a different variation of what it looks like in current state. Well, the Alameda was juiced to be able to put these on here yeah. this afternoon. She told me on Friday, you're going to love what they look like. <laughs> they have some shirts, I believe, for some alumni who are here this weekend. I hope you got one. As that one pops out the glove, Mudge trots down the second. <laughs> 1 0 count coming here now to Jason Eaton Beach from the outstanding freshman. Alex, what was the difference in a weekend after seeing a pitcher once through all the way? Adjustments and how quickly we can make them, and that's why I love game three of series, no matter what the outcome was in games one and two, because it really is just a chess match of your best versus their best. You've seen everything in live time throughout the weekend, and you can't really throw any surprises in there again because we talk about data and information, but also just at that point, you're two games in. So a lot of fun, but it's really just competitive out there. You want to see adjustments quick. Whoever's going to make them the fastest, typically the team coming out on top. Because of the throwbacks, Beecham, you might see her number a little bit different. She's wearing 30. Do you remember who wore 30 recently for Florida State? It's OK if you don't. Don't worry about it. That's what you're here for. Only Jesse Warren. Pretty good number to wear. I'm gonna get heated and toasted <laughs> by fans. I know, right. I know who she is. I got. Of I course you, you do. Much. Of course you do. I'm sure you could name her accolades and say a lot of stuff about her, but I'd say it's pretty good luck. Wearing I knew a, it wasn't wearing you. a Jesse Warren. I knew it wasn't yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. That's top priority here in this booth. Three-one count. Beecham with a runner in scoring position. Knowles threatening early. Slow dribbler charging in. Can't make the play is Baker, that was tough. We'll see how they rule it. They're gonna give an error. I think that's the right call. You see Beecham just gets fisted on this pitch, but Baker cutting across, and Duke is the best fielding team in the ACC. Takes care of the ball so well. Routine plays are no problem for him. But you throw in a little pressure, you throw in some fast movement, people on base, running past you, can all pile up. Duke's first error of the weekend. Saw a fast start from Florida State yesterday. They scored three in the bottom of the first against Cassidy Kerr. Having Janai Kerr back in the lineup after missing about a week with some knee soreness has made all the difference. An aggressive hitter, Janai Kerr, came in on Friday, first pitch she saw since being inserted back, pinch hit, slammed it off the wall for a double. I think Florida State was missing her in the lineup, no doubt. Runners on the corners. Nobody down right, finding herself in a pickle. What a pitch. 
Peter on the outside a corner evens the count to Janai. And I think when fans and people look at teams, you see how these players play. And one of the things that I love and respect so much about Kerr is just her composure on the field. You never know if she's up or she's down. Right back to the box. Oh, they got Mudge in a rundown. Throw back. Nope, they're going to try and tag her. They got her. Torres pump fakes. Got the hesitation from Mudge. And a base running error from Florida State. Heads up defense by Duke. Gets the first out of the inning and cuts down the would-be lead runner for Florida State. The runner's now on first and second with one out, but that's big for Jayla Wright and Duke. That's, it is a big play, Ari. It's a good job by Jayla Wright, but what you have right there is Florida State running what they call a down angle. You see Beecham in, in the top right corner of your screen trying to also advance to third, but that's a base running play for the Knowles. And what they do is as soon as the ball's hit on the ground, you're taken off because you've got other runners that can replace you. So it might look like a base running mishap, but it is a strategy there to try to apply the pressure to the defense on balls put in play. Kaylee Arctic, 353, five slams on the year. Hits it hard, will that stay fair? Yes, it will. Just inside the line, Knowles will strike first. Trouble in the outfield, relay throw, home curve, the tag, and she's out. How about the relay? It was Burgess getting it to the shortstop. Baker and home, they're able to gun down Janai Kerr. Florida State does score the first run, it's one nothing. But again, Duke's making some outstanding defensive plays. And I like this response here. You see Harding just takes that pitch down in the zone. That's a great piece of hitting right there. Beecham coming across easily to score. But then you have Janai Kerr just getting held up there. Out by a couple of steps. The relay was on point. They able to get down to third base. First pitch strike. Jeremiah Ross. Side corner won't get it. Robbie Guest is the home plate um here this afternoon for our series decider. Jacksonville, Florida native. The hitters count. Two down in the inning. That misses high, a three and one. Already you see adjustments being made from Florida State. Such a different looking team right now than they were Friday night. That look just completely fooled by Jayla Wright in the circle today. Seeing her pitches a little bit better, challenging her to come in the zone. Ross had a hit in both games, works the lock. It's been a nice balance for Florida State of aggressive approach and patience here in this opening inning against Jayla Wright. And if not for some outstanding defense, the Knowles could have put up a crooked number already. Here in this bottom of the first, Marissa Young trying to keep it manageable. Needs Jayla Wright to record the final out and get the Blue Devils back to the plate. Issa Torres, who's had some clutch hits this season, dribbler on the ground, Gold's got it, throws across. And Wright minimizes the damage. Florida State does strike first. We go to the and some pitches in the zone, and then the error over at short, which we know Duke is a phenomenal, phenomenal fielding team. But then doing a good job keeping Florida State only to one. And yeah, well, Duke came in the top defensive team by fielding percentage in the ACC, top ten in the country. And they've made a number of outstanding plays in the outfield, robbing would-be base hits. Yep. 
it's a good group that Marissa Young has. And I'm not in the opinion business, but I do believe <laughs> that this Duke team has what it takes to make it to OKC. Maybe a favorite to be one of those eight teams that make it to OKC. And I asked Marissa Young about those expectations. And, and she said, you do have to find a way to break the door down, right? Like last season, is a strike in there to Vega. They got to host, which is a step forward. You're a top eight. But then you got to find a way to beat a Stanford right. to get to OKC. And your group went through that. Absolutely. To be able to win on the biggest stages, you have to get to the biggest stages first and kind of, I hate to say test the waters, but just see what it's like. How gross was that change up <laughs> for royalty? Allison Royalty doing a great job flipping that change up in there. Back to back pitches, both getting called strikes. I like to see her using a different velocity here because you know she's going to work fastball, rise ball up in the zone, but they're kind of comparable in speed. So it's so important for her to have a different pitch to lean on that's a different look completely, right? You're going up in the zone with some good velo behind it in the mid 60s, and then you're just going to flip that change up in there, working down in the zone. So being able to change planes is huge. She's been able to change planes pretty effectively in her last couple of starts. Lonnie Alameda saying she's grown in comfort with this new role as Kat Sandercock moved on after an incredible career. And 2-2 on the ground. Flaherty, the veteran, to Ross. And there's one away. Here in the top of the second for Royalty and the Knowles. Last couple of starts for Royalty appearances, I should say, in general. One earned run against Western Michigan in seven innings. None at FGCU in three innings. A scoreless inning against South Dakota State. And then pitched pretty well against Alabama in the midweek. We're just trying to play the short game. They can catch a piece of the ball. Royalty working that off speed effectively to the freshman from the Lone Star State. There's thunder in the bat of Amaya Burgess. Marissa Young thinks those numbers will climb throughout her career. A sweet lefty stroke. We talk so much about athletes and failure recovery and having to make adjustments as quickly as possible, but one of the things that's not talked about enough is athletes that care so much. Allison Royalty is one of those pitchers. She is one of those teammates that, you know, I think it's almost a compliment when you say that their biggest concern as a coaching staff or the biggest obstacle she has to overcome is how much she cares. You can't let your feelings and your level of love for the game get in the way of going out there and just competing because you have to somewhat de de detach from results. And that's hard. And as athletes, we tend to feel so attached to things, right? With outcomes and stuff, but really learning to lean into the process of how we got there, appreciate the moments, no matter what the outcome is. And then typically the outcome starts working a little bit more in your favor. It's always nice. Hit hard past Torres. And Burge's second hit of the weekend. She's on first, a one out single. Burge is doing a great job driving that ball right back up the middle there. Kind of wondered if Isa Torres could have taken another step trying to just make the grab stay on her feet. You learn a lot about that when you get to this level of when you dive, when you try to stay on your feet, and run through balls. That one hit firm though. Burgess, heady play, sees the ball in the dirt and swipes second. I think we're going to see a lot of this from Duke right now, just trying to put people in motion, whether it's just steals, whether it's going to be situational hitting opportunities. I think we're going to see a lot of short game here, just trying to put, put balls in play, not pop-ups, knowing that Royalty's working up in the zone. It's all about approach. one to Torres. Does that take time though, Alex? Does the game slow down for you? The mental process that it takes to be able to be successful as you get older? Absolutely, it's something you definitely have to learn over time. A lot of maturity comes with that, a lot of failure. I say it time and time again, but you've got to fail to be able to learn in those big moments. In high school, I'm sure from your playing days, you could just out-talent the opponents, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Changes when you get 
to the college game. Scouting reports, we talked about that yesterday, the advancement of all the different numbers they have on you. Hit hard, another base hit. Marissa Young gonna hold Burgess at third. But Torres has him on the corners. One down here in the top of the second with Duke now threatening for a big inning. Back-to-back -back hits right now for the Blue Devils. Gonna be big. Also the ability to run the bases. We say it a lot. I think sometimes it seems obvious, but even Burgess being able to take advantage of an additional 60 feet now splitting the field runners at first and third makes a way better difference than runners on first and second. Especially with one out here, you put yourself in a position to have the next hitter get a sack fly opportunity, which is big. Seeing that the Noles are only up one. Can have some good situational hitting here, something to the right side, as long as you break up a double play. That could still score a run. There's the 0-1. Freelick has been aggressive in the count. And he's down 0-2 after a couple of foul balls. Freelick pinch hit yesterday, walked against Royalty, and was able to come around later and score in what would end up being a two-run inning for Duke to make things interesting in our second game. Runner going. Edenfield gonna throw down. We'll see if Burgess takes home. All right, and Torres pump fakes. The other Torres back to first base. <laughs> and almost right on cue, I was actually just about to make a note about where your infield was playing. You have your corners playing back right here. You're selling out for the double play ball. East Issa Torres is on the left side. Dev Flaherty, too, playing right behind that baseline. Corner is going to be looking for the out at home. Hit on a line. Mudge has it. Should be deep enough to get Burgess home. And there's that sack fly you talked about. We're tied at one. Phenomenal two-strike approach from Freelick. Back to first is Kelly Torres. Alex, did Issa Torres make the right decision there in the rundown of just holding on to the ball? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you want to minimize as many throws as possible when you're in rundowns like that. The only thing I could say is as soon as she realized she had... Base hit Baker to third hit of the inning. Duke just continuing to tack on some good at-bats here. But as soon as you have the runner on third committed to going back to the bag, or at least stopping, you can maybe make the throw back to first and try to just have a one throw and done type situation. But otherwise, you don't really want to get into any kind of circus play over throwing balls and stuff. Florida State wants to do with how good Duke is. Winning that regular season title and having the one seed for the ACC tournament could come down to this weekend. He said, who else are we going to rely on to beat them twice Absolutely. in this conference? He said, we've got to be the ones to do it. Duke threatening to dethrone Florida State. Another looper. Torres this time backpedals onto the grass. And so, just like Wright, Royalty limits the damage. to just became more disciplined in the box. So today here, game three, Florida State making those adjustments quicker. And Adam Field first pitch. Right up the middle. Edenfield specifically was struggling against Wright. Had three strikeouts against Jayla Wright, so that's got to feel good for Edenfield, who made the adjustment on the drop. Yeah, you talk about making changes quickly. Edenfield doing a good job. First time through the lineup for her, taking a drop ball, which we know Jayla Wright does so well, typically out of the zone, making her bring it up, taking advantage of the first pitch that she sees that she can drive right back up the middle. And the key, too, to a drop ball is not trying to do too much. You know that it's already working down in the zone. Just get your barrel there. Drop barrel pretty well. That one rips right to second base. Edenfield had to dive back in there. Good work from Torres backing up first base. Is Edenfield OK? Edenfield's a tough cookie. It's going to take a lot to get her out of a ball game. Just a bit of concern there initially because it almost looked like she plopped down. That ball hit really firm on the line. You see she kind of stopped right in her tracks, went back, 
that shoulder, that right shoulder leaning into the bag. Also looking like it almost hit her hand on the throw to first, but you gotta take care of yourself. It, it's scary in situations like that because you just never know. This ball smoked to right fields, but right at Davidson. A couple of loud outs here in this inning on Jayla Wright. And that defensive positioning by Duke has been pinpoint all weekend. Absolutely, well Duke plays for the miss hits like that. You know Jayla Wright goes down in the zone really well, so typically you're just playing for balls that are nubbed off the end of the bat. And kind of similar with Cassidy Curd even yesterday, she's up in the zone, but typically people flare in pitches, shallow outfield, so Duke stays consistent in the green. First pitch strike to Mudge. Who lined a single in her first plate appearance. continuing to trek that average north back to 300. And then a career 300 hitter. Something that you're looking for if you are Marissa Young for Duke or Lonnie Alameda for Florida State is the opposing hitters and the adjustments that they are making against your pitching staff. So you have Allison Royalty up in the zone pitcher. Duke came out swinging a couple of balls on the ground, a couple of flyouts, yes. Two for two, now for much. Eddie Field a second, she'll stop there. Florida State seeing Jayla right well here in the inning. Well, and almost right on cue, right? Then if you're Marissa Young, you start seeing Florida State hitters challenging right to bring pitches up in the zone a little more patient in the box as opposed to Friday night. So you keep that in the back of your mind as you continue to strategize throughout the game, making pitching changes throughout the next couple innings. That's the stuff that you pick up on and are trying to look ahead for seeing matchups and what's going to work out best. Beecham sees it down, 1 and 0. Oh. Beecham reached on an error by Jada Baker in the first, came around to score. And a hitter's count here. Now two and up. Look at that number on the bottom there with Jason E. Beecham. Almost 450 with runners in scoring position. <laughs> Talk about clutch. Get people on. Jason E. Beecham more than likely to get him in. So do that as a freshman. Watches that up. Three and oh. Janai Kerr would be next. Edden Field at second. Mudge at first. Florida State threatening yet again. A rubber match between the Knolls and the Blue Devils. Four pitch walk, Beecham not phased. And happy to take the base. So she passes the baton to Janai Kerr. What a good spot to be in if you're Janai Kerr and feeling good, seeing the ball well. Things feel slow for her in the box, bat, batter's box. I got to talk to her yesterday too, and we haven't seen her play the last week consistently, fighting off a little bit of a nagging injury, but I think her biggest thing right now is she's just been frustrated. She wants to get out there, wants to compete. She is a high-level competitor, so she's looking at this as a really cool opportunity. Janai Kerr, who led Florida State, Batting average last year. Aggressive first pitch swinging. And she catches a piece to the backstop 0 oh, and 1. And this too, Aria, is exactly what Marissa Young wanted to see Jayla Wright get exposed to as you take a look at Janaya. 0 oh for 1 on the day, the fielder's choice back in the first. That's ultimately, we got Mudge in the rundown between third and home. This is Janai Kerr's first appearance on the season with the bases loaded. With runners in scoring position, she's hitting 500. With two outs, 455. Let's work here, boy, let's go! There's two outs in the inning. 
Jayla Wright's just one pitch away from getting out of it. Little dribbler to first, and Wright does get out of it. Knowles leave him loaded. Clutch pitching from Wright. The Knowles get nothing to the third. It's a good day to be here in the booth. Best seat in the house. First pitch strike. Here to Jennings. How do you evaluate how the Duke bats are seeing royalty right now? Yeah, second time through the lineup. Really good spot for Duke to see what they're made of. Jennings pops it up. She flies. She's safe. Edenfield just took that extra half second. Try and wind up. Ooh, Jennings coming up limping a little bit as well. Jennings lays that bunt down beautifully. Had some air there for a second. Thought it might be able to be caught, but really looking at the fielders, the only person that could even remotely make that play is Edenfield. She came up really well out of the crouch. Fires over to first. Unable to come up with it. Jennings, so much speed down the line. We've seen her try to short game throughout the weekend. Finally working her way here this afternoon. Nice little birthday hit. Out and a leadoff batter here for Duke. We talked about momentum swings. And the Blue Devils have withstood some of Florida State's pushes. They've minimized damage. They put themselves in a golden opportunity now to take control of this game. Another one on the ground and yet another single. Oh, Duke. Executing to perfection the short game. Two on, nobody down. Lonnie Alameda quickly out of the dugout to being who FSU has been. As Davidson steps in, first pitch swinging. Shallow right field, Way Caser comes in, runner tagging, throw down to third and not in time. Jennings gets under the tag and advancing to second. Heads up by Anna Golds. That essentially works as a sacrifice. One down, and now two in scoring position. And you know Jennings can motor down the baseline. Look right there. I love how she's peeking the entire time over her shoulder. That's phenomenal base running by Jennings. I love that she was challenging to the arm of Waycaser in right field, even on a shallow fly ball. This one looping in, Waycaser makes the catch. They're going to test her again. This throw to the plate is not in time. Jennings speed the difference. Duke takes the lead down to third, goes Golds. Station to station softball. And the Blue Devils back on top. a huge at bat for Amina Vega, but that would not be done if it were not for Deanna Jennings having some phenomenal base running all the way around, even that last one coming in to score. Now to the short game again. That'll bring home another run. Duke showing off the speed here of their roster. And they double that lead. They're now up three to one. One of the sayings is speed kills, and it does right here. You see right off the bat, Gold is immediately scoring with two outs from third, and then Burgess, though, just motors down the baseline. Beautiful execution on the short game there. Duke continuing to put balls in play and really challenge the infield of Florida State. There's Torres sees the first pitch high. And the hardest thing about moments like this, Aria, is the game sometimes can feel really fast out there on the field. You're trying to look each other in the eyes, slow it down, and just say, hey, we've got this, pitch by pitch. We thought we would see some adjustments here today. Game three, game one was, you know, the power game for Duke. A lot of big swings, but we thought they'd do something different here, trying to push some runs, runs across the board this afternoon. 
that you and I talked about before we came on air. And Marissa Young said, we've got to do some things differently here to scratch runs across. And both of us said short hit. That's probably what Duke's going to turn to. They've used it in spots, right? They've used it when it's been effective. But they've been trying to figure out this chess match. We've gone back and forth to the strategic strategy. And the way that Marissa Young is just trying to get a victory. you got to get out of here with a win. Do whatever it takes. Sometimes it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you can do it. And great teams have multiple ways in their toolbox that they can pull out and win. Another foul ball. Torres stays alive. Heads up. Over there in the pavilion. Sometimes it's a power game. Sometimes it's a short game. And I don't think it necessarily matters to coaches as long as you're getting a dub in the end and learning along the way, too. Out there having a good time. See Kat Sandercock out there. I think she would have had it. Doing <laughs> her position very well. One, two again, Torres able to fight off that outside half. Keep herself alive. Torres, the catcher who has flashed her arm behind the dish multiple times on the weekend, threw out two goals yesterday. Still in that one to count. We've seen the versatility of Duke, as Alex mentioned. We saw power on Friday. It was outstanding defense yesterday. They've gone to the short game here. A versatile group that can beat you in many ways. Coach Young talked about throwing punches. She said, we want to throw punches early and often. And we know we're going to get punched, but we've got to be able to get back up, keep fighting, challenging our opponent, no matter who it is on the other side of the field. Doing a good job here today. Off the leg of Reed, right to Beecham. Right place, right time. And the inning. Right, sometimes. Sometimes. Just gotta go station to station. Yeah, sometimes it's a short game, definitely. And speed kills. It's so dangerous on the base path when you have people that can run because they can do so many things, apply the pressure on the opposing defense to try to make you have to come up with really good throws on the money. Jennings there, though, the star of that inning, in my opinion. Really getting things going, of course, let off the inning with a bunt, which helps, but also just, again, good base running, putting herself in situations to get in scoring position. 60 feet by 60 feet. There's Kaylee Arding. She's had a monster weekend. Five for seven after her RBI double in the first. She's got five ribbies, three extra base hits. She's ahead 3-0 and oh in the count. And right now it's going to be crucial for Florida State as an offense to not try to press here. They still want to do what they've been doing so far this game, challenging. Jayla Wright in the circle to have to come into the zone a little bit more. So even though you're down two, you don't want to force at bat, swing at stuff out of the zone, because that's when Wright is really good. There's a strike. The automatic for Wright, who has helped do pitching limit to Florida State. Bats to just really no home runs, actually. I'm looking at the box scores. The Seminoles who came in third on the weekend in the ACC in home runs as a team. Haven't left the yard once here on the weekend. That's a testament to the great pitching staff. And you don't only really just have one or two pitchers for Duke that are really good. You've got four legit arms that can throw at any time. And all very different, too. <laughs> Off speed in there for a strike. Harding maybe looking for something firm. Right with the confidence to be able to spin. The off speed in there, and the count is full. He stays alive. Haley Harding doing a good job getting ahead in this count, working it to a 3 0 count, but then Wright responding well quickly. A couple of strikes in the zone, that one down and out of the zone. But Getting some bait from Harding. He's kind of now in defense mode. Just trying to compete. It's a tough spot to be in against a pitcher like Wright. Hit hard on the ground. Vega 
bobbles, handles, throws across. And so Wright battles back from 3-0 and in the count to retire Harding. Kayla Wright, her father, Jocko Wright, spent some time in the Seattle Mariners organization. So she's grown up around bat and ball. I'm sure Jocko and Felicia are both very proud of Jayla Wright, who has just been balling. Oh, her defense let her down that time, a rarity. But it's the second error by the infield of the Blue Devils here today. Amaya Ross will take it, get down to first. Florida State needs to try to take advantage of these kind of opportunities here. They don't come often, especially from a team like Duke. You're going to see this one. Maya Ross just getting on top of that ball, but on a gold at third, coming across the diamond, doing a good job cutting that ball off, but kind of takes her eyes off of the ball as she's trying to field it, already looking ahead to the base where she's looking to throw. It's fundamental taking care of the softball, not trying to get ahead of yourself, because we know that Ross, and another person too that has speed down the baseline, I think, Aria, which is probably why you had on a gold feeling like she might have to rush to get herself in a position ready to throw knowing that the longer she takes, the, the further Ross gets up the line, but step by step. Alex, that was just the third error on gold on the year. It's impressive. It's a big showdown here in the rubber match. Both sides probably feeling it, understanding what it means for their seasons. Take a look at where you have your infield outfield set up. You have your corners playing off the lines. You know that on pitchers like right, you're working more five, six hole, three, four hole on the corners there. You've got your middle shaded up the middle. Outfield playing that midway point. They're not used to getting beat over their head. And I think we saw that yesterday, especially from Issa Torres in the box for Florida State. She had a nice little line drive over the head of left fielder at the time, Davidson. It's going to be important for Florida State to continue to see balls up on thigh high if they can. Ross at first, the freshman Torres sees it down. Throw down is not in time. Torres has a rocket for an arm and unleashed another good throw. But maybe Ross's speed by a hair, the difference. What a great job there. Kelly Torres, she is really impressing me behind the dish. Even makes that one close. Nice little pick action there that she had with the ball in the dirt, but Amaya Ross, definitely the fastest player for Florida State on the bases. So even how close Torres was with that one is really catching my eye. Underneath it, Burgess, you can hear a yell, mine. Good communication makes the grab. Two outs here for Edenfield. Edenfield got her first base hit of the weekend in her last plate appearance. Be patient, let's go. Something in the gaps right now would be crucial for Florida State. That'd be a big momentum shift for them. They're just singling Jayla right here. Time after time, something in the gaps would be huge. The way Duke has minimized damage all weekend, a base open at first. And with the power that is in Edenfield's bat, the ability to get to that garage you just saw on the screen, <laughs> do you pitch her even more carefully here knowing the bag's open? I think so. Don't want to give her anything over the middle. Pound the inside corner after a couple of pitches away. Ross can fly there at second. What a great pitcher's pitch there, too. Down in the count, 2-0, but that's not a pitch. It's a hitter that you want to hit. Painted on the inside corner off the plate just a bit. Jayla Wright's going to top off at 71. So as a hitter, not something you feel like you can necessarily drive when that ball's inside. It's hard to get your hands extended with that kind of velo. Patience, we're good. 
good, here we go. 36 career home runs in the back of Michaela Edmonton. Two two pitch from right. Yeah. Now full. That's a pitch that really bothered Edenfield in Let's game one. Here, five, one. Let's go. And she'd be the first one to tell you how full she was on Friday night, just swinging at pitches out of the zone, getting outside of herself. She's like, no, that's not me. I gotta dial it back in. Wright takes a deep breath. Off the end of the bat, it is over the head of Jennings. RBI double, Michaela Edenfield. Seven holes, strike right back. You know what they say, Aria, speak it into existence. Edenfield goes down to get that pitch over the head of center fielder Jennings there just getting beat. We talked about where the Duke outfield was playing, shallow outfield. That ball was driven deep. I love how fired up Edenfield is coming through clutch. You got your Knowles in a good position here. We talked about extra base hits, clutch. That gets away from Torres to third goes Edenfield. Tying run. Now just one back away. And a game of momentum swings, right? Florida State's got the home crowd behind it. Those momentum swings gonna be a bit more drastic when you're playing in the confines of your own backyard. Here's Way Kaser in a 1-0. Strike called inside corner. Wow, that's good stuff from Jayla Wright. Still nasty from Wright, still working down in the zone. She doesn't look like she's shaking up too much. She's a competitor out there and loves these kind of moments. Smoked foul, oh boy. Donald Brown, look out. <laughs> Love the crowd react to just fired up, getting behind their home squad. See Don Brown there, Travis Wilson. Trying to dodge balls left and right. Let's go, Uno, let's go. On the ground. Baker gobbles it up and throws across. Florida State gets one back. And just the pop fly to right by Claire Davidson and Jennings just motoring on the base path. And I say call me crazy because that to me was the key play of the inning without a run coming across to score in that at bat from Davidson, but really setting the table to get people in positions there, runners on second and third after that Davidson tag up pop fly. And the rest is history so far. We contrast that to Florida State, right, in the early innings. Mudge got picked off the bag at third. Uh, you get gunned down at the plate with Janai Kerr running home. So two would-be base runners that are erased off the paths, could be runs. That could be the difference with Florida State right now having four or five runs as opposed to allowing Jayla Wright and the Blue Devils to stay in it, away from home, and having the opportunity to be able to do what they've done and now take the lead three to two. Couldn't agree more. Execution. Timely execution, too. Four pitch walk to Freelich. She's been a tough at bat here this weekend, as have all the Blue Devils. all the time about limiting free passes as much as possible, but really I think the storyline as of late is lead off runners, lead off batters, getting on base with no outs is a really high statistic. On the ground, Beecham stays with it. Oh wow, what a throw. 
Pays to have a bazooka as an arm. He cleans up mistakes. And the Knolls are able to get one out there is one or two second. And Baker getting beat on that pitch, taking it from the outside corner. Pulling it, but Jason E. Beecham doing a good job fielding her position. You'd love to see her try to field that ball cleanly, get the force out at two, see if something can happen there, but nonetheless comes up with it, still getting it out. There's Giselle Tapia to the circle. Reed goes to first with it, and the third is Freeland. Still trying to find her groove, too. See what she can get going. Working her way back into this game. A lot of innings yesterday, a lot of pitches. She had good pitch efi efficiency, though, in the circle, which I think is why she's able to come back in today and get some more innings, but not sure how long the Knowles will be able to ride her arm. Oh, she threw 92 pitches yesterday. Mm -hmm. Here's pitch number 18 of this outing. There's a strike. Talk about pitch location, and look at this pitch. McKenna Reed just painting that off the plate there on the inside part. I like that call, it's a tough pitch to hit, don't get me wrong, so uh, I'm a hitter's girl through and through. I've said that time and time again. But I love Reed establishing the zone off the plate, getting the call. Good stuff. Maybe we can make that a phrase, hitter's girl. You know, like they say girl's girl. I go, yeah, they're a girl's girl. Always in the corner, but Lonnie Alameda is a girl's girl. She's a pitcher's girl, though, not a hitter's. You've got to see how it fits as a puzzle <laughs> piece. It's typically trial and error. We'll see. It's like a batting average, right? Yeah. If you hit on three out of the ten, you're a Hall of Famer. Hey, you're pretty darn good. I'll take it. Here's the impressive Deanna Jennings in the 2 2 count. Trying to slap it the other way. I saw Beecham really hugging that line. It's foul. Ivana Gold on deck. Strike three calls. Throws her on the outside half. McKenna Reed doing McKenna. Could be a big moment right now for Florida State to try to flip the switch, get things going in their favor. Looking to do some damage here. We can Florida State known for tight battles throughout the years in these ACC series. FSU winning last year up in Durham, two out of three. Game three affected by weather. They had to call it in the sixth. Florida State getting out of there with that victory. And then in the ACC title game, Knowles able to knock off the Blue Devils by one run to claim the trophy. That's a good game. It's a great game. <laughs> but Duke's been hanging around, right? Yes. As that number two in the conference yes. for a couple of years now. You said it yesterday. To be the best, you gotta beat the best. This is a chance to dethrone the queens of the ACC. Clarity retired by Golds. A good start for Wright here in the fourth. Something tells me Florida State, though, is not quite ready to give it up, right? They don't want that mantle passed down to anybody else. I would hope not. I would say the same about any competitor. You are an elite level athlete. You don't just roll over and quit and give up all those achievements away lightly. Got to be earned. First pitch, misses to Kaylee Mudge. She's two for two. Yeah, 
It's hard to get those, those natties. One out, hit hard. Vega has it, two away. Mudge retired for the first time here this afternoon. That's three quality balls that Kaylee Mudge has put in play. She's seeing the ball well, that one going right to second baseman Vega, but Mudge is doing a good job in the box, getting pitches up in the zone, dropping barrel well. Beecham on a 1-0 count. Has been on base twice here in game three. Patient eye at the plate. Does not strike out often. Elite power in that Louisville slugger bat. Strike from right. Both of the runs that Wright has allowed here today have been unearned. Still hasn't struck out a null yet. Beecham, right center, hit it well. That's going to get to the gap and to the wall. It's a double for the freshman. Florida State's got some two out magic. Great approach here by Jason E. Beecham, just taking this pitch. That's exactly what you have to do off of the drop ball pitcher. See the ball deep. That one was off the plate, but Jason E. Beecham just taking her hands, going the other way with it. Some oppo power. We say it all the time, Aria. Great hitters go the other way when they're hitting, but I love that approach. Drop balls, you have to hit the ball opposite field if you want to have any kind of success. Middle to opposite field, of course, but nonetheless. Ability for Beecham to just accept it, let the ball get deep, and serve it to right center. It's impressive for anybody, that ability. But to do it in your rookie campaign, it's an advanced hitter. She represents the tying run at second base for Florida State. Kerr right to the shortstop. She dropped it. Beecham going to score. We're tied. the pressure to the defense right here. You see Jason E. Beecham does a great job just running the bases, motoring down. She's got two outs. She's going on the swing, Janai Kerr. Love that piece of hitting, hitting it so firm through the zone. That's a shot. All around great offensive play for Florida State. Tough one for the Blue Devils. They're gonna give it, well, they haven't actually ruled it anything <laughs> yet. It's gotta be an error. I mean, it hit her right smack in the glove. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, drum roll. Where is you it, where's my drum roll? You might get the home <laughs> scoring here at your own park. But Baker, that would be two errors, and she's been phenomenal on the year. Duke's quiet threat here. She kind of just flies into the radar with superstars like Jayla Wright, Cassidy Curd in the circle. But yesterday came in in relief early in the ball game for Cassidy Kern, who only lasted two innings. Lily Walker getting four on the day, only giving up two hits. As soon as she came in, it was like she shut down the Florida State offense overall. And right now, Florida State needs to get to work. There's Harding. Is there blood in the water? Oh, one, misses one, and one. Got to give the Noles credit, though, Alex. A couple of times today, we've talked about how Jayla Wright's been hit hard, right? And if you're kind of playing with fire at times, you're gonna be burned eventually. 
And no matter if, if you should get out of the inning or not, some of the contact you've been given up have been laser beams. On the grounds, Vega. She's been active here this weekend. Been asked to do a ton and has fielded her position well. However, this decade. Oh my gosh, so fun. I love just getting to share experiences, stories, moments, different things. Yesterday we had a nice little banquet after the game. It was a fun time just getting to chit chat a little bit with people that I hadn't seen in years. Some I've never met. And it was funny because one of the questions we had to answer was what was our favorite practice while we were here playing for Florida State? And I said, you know, I really loved practice, but I could tell you in particular my least favorite practice. And I couldn't even remember my most favorite. So I think that says a lot. Every day was good except for a couple. <laughs> so what you're saying is you didn't know everybody, but exactly. everybody knew you. <laughs> well, what's it like to be cool? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Still <laughs> figuring it out. 1-1 one, one here to gold, up high. What was that moment like for you watching Cenas hit the home run? And that was your freshman year. Yeah. To be the team that kind of broke the door down, so to speak, to get to OKC. What's in your brain as you see the ball leave in the park against Michigan? So much fun. And I can just tell you, you know, when I get asked the question of what is one of my favorite Florida State moments wearing the uniform, the two that come to mind in particular aren't even moments that I was necessarily a part of contributing to Courtney Sinas' walk-off home run to go to the World Series it was definitely one of them. Callie Harrod's home run in the World Series in 2016. We were in an elimination game by far, also one of the coolest moments. You see Courtney Sinas making the trip there in the stands with her family, all the way from Hawaii. She had goodie bags for everyone. She did, I think I still have some snacks for mine. I have to break those open for us. One of the all-time legends in Florida State Athletics. Men's sports, women's sports, doesn't matter. Courtney Sinas has one of the memorable moments in Knowles history. Duke hoping to build history like that for their program. They've got the right makings. A win today and a series victory this weekend will be a loud statement to the college softball world about new kids on the block in the ACC. And Anna Gold works the walk. It's a good start. Here in the fifth is Davidson now coming to the plate. for Claire Davidson in the box, over for two so far on the day, but was so good this weekend for Duke coming through big. And some huge moments, four for six coming into today, five ribbies. She hit the ball the opposite field, of course, so well, but was able to pull one right center too, out of power in the gaps. I've loved watching her approach. She's somebody that just sprays the ball all over the, over the field. And if you're a pitcher and you leave the ball remotely close to the zone, might be a dangerous day for you when you're facing Claire Davidson, so. Kenna Reed needs to continue the approach here. Lefty, lefty matchup. No fly zone, right? That's what we want to pitch. Yeah. <laughs> With a hitter like Claire Davidson. Kenna Reed wearing number 48 on her back. Megan King's number? Yes, good All right, job, I'm back. I mean, we're even again. <laughs> I don't have to be rich, just don't want to be in debt. <laughs> Rolled on the ground. I think it might have caught a piece of Davidson's foot. So she'll stay alive. It's two and one. On the ground, could be two. To second for one, they just cut down the lead runner. Nice play by Torres to be able to handle the throw, stay on the bag. There is one away. Gold retired. Davidson will be at first. Give her a fielder's choice. I like that play from Ross over at first base. She knows that on a 
hit like that right back to her kind of firm. Nice one hopper there. She can fire across, get the lead runner at second base. Torres getting taken out a little bit, unable to come up with any kind of double play attempt. But that's smart softball working ahead. Would it have been tough for Ross to step on the bag at first and then try and throw down the second? Yes and no. I think maybe if she were playing just a step further back, she could have done that pretty easily. She was playing in on that ball just a smidge. And so just those extra steps, I don't think you want to take the chance to not get the lead runner because that really is your primary concern. With a score like this already headed into the fifth. Minimal opportunities kind of dwindling down, right? I hear you. Could have gone either way. So. Talked about the uniforms. The stirrups are pretty sweet, too. <laughs> I used to want to play in stirrups so bad. I, I loved the look. It's classic, right? It is. It is. Florida State baseball right across from us has just gotten underway. The last undefeated team in college baseball at Hauser right now playing Notre Dame. They just introduced the pinstripes back into their rotation. I was going to say, well, does baseball wear stirrups? Some of them do. Okay. One and two. Misses. You and I will have a chance to do some baseball together this season. Looking That'll be today. fun. It's always a good time in the booth. Tell you what, this has been a blast. Two of the best teams in the ACC and in the country. We thought we would get three good games. We thought it would come down to the third game, and it has. And it's delivered. A 3-3 game here in the fifth. Really good swing from Vega. If she just straightens it out, that would have been a big blow here as we approach the latter innings. You want to take it. There's Torres off to an incredible start to her freshman campaign. Into that gap. It's going to get down into the wall. Are they going to wave the runner? Nope. Hammer in the brakes. Marissa Young kept Davidson at third. And Vega, sometimes it's hit them where they ain't. And that was perfect. She didn't hit it hard. It floated. But the Knolls were positions and it got perfectly to the gap between left and center field. And that ball just missing way too much white on that pitch, right down the middle of the plate, but Vega wasting no time taking advantage of the best pitch she's going to be seeing in that at bat. Love that she was able to be on time, put it in play, drive it the other way. Gap to gap hitting, so crucial, because it's tough to beat a team by singling pitch after pitch, hit after hit. So to be able to get a couple extra bases, extra base hits being huge. Haven't seen the home run yet for Florida State this weekend at all. Haven't seen a home run today. Of course, a lot of short game from Duke. Doubles from Florida State so far. That's the third hit of the weekend for Vega. And I think this late in the game for Florida State to try and optimize their chances of getting out of the inning cleanly, they're going to put Burgess on to load the bases, so an intentional walk coming. You gotta execute that. Ooh, that from Reed may be a little closer to the plate than you would want. It's gonna come down to Torres and Freelich behind her as the Seminoles trying to create some force outs. I think that was the right move too, just trying to load the bases, get that force out play. Implement it here. It helps that Burgess was already two for two on the day, seeing the ball well. Limiting exposure, trying to minimize any kind of threats out here. Florida State taking the approach the way of safety more than anything. That gets away from Edenfield. Coming home, touching the plate is Davidson. Duke leads. Situation that you don't want to happen. McKenna Reed, that one down in the dirt, but Enfield trying to receive that ball, needed to flip that glove over, try to make the block or even the pick. Not trying to be picky on there. Pun not intended on that, but got to turn the glove over, try to get that stop. Right. 
both runners also advanced. Vega's at third, and that's Burgess at second. And that's just what you don't want to happen in a moment like that. It's like you just load the bases to try to get a situation going here. And first pitch pass ball. Oof, tough. There's Torres. One for two today. The average has gone north. Now a 385. Torres on the year. Batting 333 with runners in scoring position. On the ground, Florida State gonna give up the run. Flaherty throws to first, touching home as Vega. Duke's got a two spot here in the fifth. That's a big at bat right there for Duke. Kelly Torres coming through big, ground and out. Situational opportunity there for the Florida State defense. You had Flaherty playing in baseline there on that ball, but still so much speed on the base path. And as soon as that ball was even remotely in the zone, you had Vega gone. Owen catches the bat of Freelich, foul. And field will chase. Gotta give Duke credit. That's what good teams do, right? They take advantage of mistakes. They pick and they prod. And when the opportunity presents itself, they really capitalize. Duke has executed softball to near perfection on the offensive side here today and really all weekend. When they do, great teams take advantage of any opportunity they can. Got to push the runs across the board somehow, some way. Doesn't matter if it's short games, balls in the gap, balls over the fence. Pass ball opportunities here. AP in your heyday, as well as the last couple of years here for Florida State as coaches coming out to the circle. People see the home runs, right? They, they see the offense, they see a star pitcher in the circle. But those- So trying to limit any further threat here on the bases is Danley and she's got all the responsibility. This is Freelich. The catcher watches it for a ball. Freelich had that sack fly in the second, a walk in the fourth. I'll tell you what, between her and Torres, Duke's got a pretty good catcher duo. Finds his own for a strike. I like to see just the bottom part of your lineup too coming through big in some clutch moments. And that's something Marissa complimented coming into the weekend was, hey, it's not just my one, two, three, four hole hitters. It's six, seven, eight, nine, two. Hit hard, Flaherty keeps it in front of her and retires freely. Nobody you want up right now more for Florida State than Amaya Ross. Just look at putting up the numbers so far this season. The first couple seasons, 99 games played so far this season playing in Nearly every competition, actually every competition so far, the Florida State has had game-wise. Home run numbers elevating through the roof this year. She's so fast, we've known that from day one about her. But I love the production she's had in the box. Tries to go to the short game, Walker quickly gets there, covering perfectly Vega. That's how you practice it on defense. And the Blue Devils get the first out against the Speedy Ross. That's a great job by Lily Walker, just feeling her position there. So much speed on the base path by Ross. If anything, trying to deaden that ball just a little bit more in front of Walker, trying to have her go an extra step or two out of the circle. But good pitchers, fielding practice from Walker, who's coming in time and time again and doing good things. She might end up being the MVP of the weekend for Duke, the unsung hero, at the very least. Florida State's had trouble figuring out Walker. She's been able to spot the off-speed, inner half, outer half, as a put-away pitch. 
has kept the Seminoles off balance all weekend long. Trying to go right back to it, just missed. One, two, slicing left field line foul. Something that we haven't seen much of from this Florida State offense is the adjustments off of Walker in the circle. We talk so much about Jayla Wright, Cassidy Curd being the aces for the Blue Devils, but Walker just so effective. Florida State not making the necessary adjustments, sitting on off sweep pitch. This one, left center field, gap ranging over Davidson. Two outs in the fifth. Claire Davidson is kind of a floater. In the outfield going corner to corner. Sierra getting time and left, and then she'll switch over to right. So I feel like the ball's finding her no matter where she is. Let's go. Edenfield sees it down on the zone for a ball. Kayla Edenfield had him had herself a nice go, afternoon. Let's go. Single in the second. And an RBI double in the third. about adjustments. Enfield was 0 for 5 headed into today, but has found herself a couple of hits, making some good adjustments in the box. Nice little double just in a couple innings ago. She's somebody who Duke had her number. Headed into the weekend, making her swing outside of herself, chasing pitches. Another good pitcher strikes. And now has been really patient in the box today. Rio in there for a strike. After Edenfield is way case. Be patient, let's go. Two outs here on the fifth. The Seminole catcher at the dish. Strike two. That's below the knee. And this pitch from Walker. Just cutting across the plate. That one down in the zone below the knees. It's a tough pitch That's for sure. Luckily, Edenfield ahead in the counts. So he still had room to work with. But definitely not one you want to hit when you're ahead 3-1. Count is full. Edenfield waited back on it, hit it a ton, but foul. Let's see, let's do it again. Our friend out left in the patio almost had the catch. Right through his hands. We talk pitch to pitch changes, but look at this one, that floater, that's a change up. With just the flip out of the hand, floater through the zone, it's so tough to keep your weight back. The velo differential, too, pretty significant. That one just going to float in in the 40s. Makes it hard as a hitter to sit back and wait, and that flip change is what has made Lily Walker so effective. It's all you up there. Let's go. We'll do the full count again. Walker ready to go. Misses high. Edenfield, patient A.B. He gets to the walk. Florida State has the tying runner now at the plate. Number 
Way Kaster, who has been known for having some really clutch at bats in her career, has hit some big home runs as well for Florida State. Watches the first pitch low. Had a blast against Tennessee last year in the College World Series there in OKC. Helped Florida State advance to the championship series. for a strike. And Waycaster is another one to me, kind of similar to Amaya Ross, that has had opportunities throughout her career, but finally kind of making her way consistently into that lineup. We've seen her be a role player here and there. Sometimes going to the outfield, sometimes getting at bats. Rolls it over. The throw across in time. So Florida State gets one on, nothing more. Duke leads by two. Looking really good. They came out, game one of the series, lights out all the way around, scoring it up 10-5, I think, if they would have kept Jayla Wright in for the duration of the game. Score might have ended up a little bit different, but hey, we learn as we go. Florida State responded well yesterday. It's been a close back and forth battle so far this afternoon, but Duke doing just a little bit more to push a few across. They added a, another run there in that inning on uh, Kelly Torres. RBI ground out. We can't complain. We love watching good softball. Quality at bats, quality defense for the most part. A couple of miscues, which has really been the difference maker. Keeping Florida State in this ball game. Three errors from Duke. All unearned run scores for the Knolls. Chopper, Torres, one away. Pinch hitter for Duke, Sarah Goddard. We saw her get some time yesterday. Didn't make the starting lineup today. Coming out swinging. Big first cut, first pitch she sees, wasting no time. Talk about people getting opportunities, finding their ways to become everyday players. Sarah Goddard back and forth just a, a little in the lineup for Duke. Trying to show coach why she should get more at bats here. That was a mighty act. Yeah. We've seen Goddard in the outfield here this weekend. So in your scorebook, Tapia comes out of the lineup. See the adjustment in the field as Danley misses high. The schedule is coming up for both of these teams. Duke still does have to play. Virginia Tech and Clemson on the year. They have series against both. Florida State does not play either. Torres, they're gonna have to test the arm and she executes to perfection, wow. Good for you, Issa Torres. It was deep in the hole. And for a second there, I, I thought Goddard was gonna get a Base hit, nice little ball in the 5-6 hole. Looked like it was gonna be a tough one, but Issa Torres, a cannon of an arm, just fires a missile across the diamond. Amaya Ross has some good height to her too, just reaching up, making the grab. Back to the top of the order. Deanna Jennings. As a base hit here today, she's had a hit in all three games. Game threes was a single in the third. And Jennings has beat the Florida State defense a couple of times. Not gonna let her get on on this one. The infield definitely playing in here. You got your corners playing well in front of the bag. Even your middles are playing in baseline. 
saying, hey, we know you can run, we know you can short game, so we're ready for it. Now two and one. It's tough though, when you have a defense selling out and you can still find ways to get on base and be successful, you know you're a force to be reckoned with out there in the box. Nothing worse too as a defensive player selling out for something and still having them beat you. Jennings just finds ways to get on base. Right up the middle, she's got her second hit of the game. It's so crucial to be able to see that too as the hitter saying, hey, I know that I've got my infield really selling out here. They're not gonna let me try to drop anything in front. I'm just gonna go up the middle and still put the ball in play pretty firm. See so her just taking that pitch right down the middle of the field. It's a good piece of hitting, smart piece of hitting from a very experienced player. Jennings last season broke the program record for batting average, 462 as well as hits with 80 of them. She was top 10 nationally in both of those categories. Jennings was an All-American right out of the gate as a freshman. Now in her sophomore year, she's now batting 423 here in her second season. This one rolled on the ground. Ross has it. Will take it to the bag herself. Danley comes in, shuts this door down. Florida State's got two of this. It's a grind, it's a daily battle. And then next thing you know, it's over. And you're looking back and you're just a washed up alumni. Like myself, kind of sad. <laughs> you're not washed up, you're just an alumni. Kind of sad. Katie Dack gonna pinch hit for Devin Flaherty here. Stay ready. Junior who started her career at Texas A&M, double digit home runs for the Aggies, all SEC performer. Got to Florida State last season, but the beginning of January, trying to integrate herself. She still hit double digit home runs for the Knowles. Here this season, I asked Lonnie Alameda, what happened to Dak, where has she been? And Coach was honest, she said, we've got a lot of options in the outfields. Amaya Ross has kind of stepped up. Her batting average has increased 150 points at first base. And Dak's just kind of finding a role here. This is a big at bat for Dak. The talent there, no doubt. I think the Knowles could use the depth from a player that's been in some big moments in two different conferences. Big cut, it's two and two. Experience is the best teacher, and we say it a lot, but to get anywhere and to win anywhere, you've got to get there first. It's the hardest part. Then you can learn how to compete at that level, at that location whether it's a Division I softball, whether it's the World Series. Ooh, fans might remember for Florida State, Dak hit a three-run shot at Oklahoma and Norman last season <laughs> that stunned that crowd. Gave Florida State the lead in the middle innings of that one. Okay, well, that's a good one. I remember watching from home and I was so fired up. Dak skies it in the infield. Who's gonna get it? Vega calls it off. And she makes the grab, one away. Lily Walker just continues to deal. Perhaps one final time through the top of the order for FSU. Here's Kaylee Mudge. Two for a three here on the afternoon. That average getting close again to 300. Budget 346 last year, 347 the season before that. Kelly Mudge working a little different in the box here, too. Going to show us just a bit of her short game, trying to slap her way on base. Saw her have a couple of solid hits. She was seeing the ball well too, in my opinion, Aria. I thought she squared it up multiple at bats today. And 
Mudge who missed fall ball in a lot of spring with an ankle injury that needed a procedure to clean up. Might be one of those cases where she's at her best by the end of the year and she works through a couple of months of at bats. She's ahead three and one. Now in the count. It's tough when you're trying to battle back and more than anything you know it's not reps that you're missing out on, it's just game like feel and the fast pace that is the actual games as opposed to practice. You can try to replicate it as best as possible. Doesn't always happen that way. Dribbler on the ground, Vega underhand toss, two down. Needing a spark plug here. Somebody trying to have a good at bat battle against Walker. She's been borderline lights out. Minimal offensive production since she entered the game. A couple of innings of work. No hits. Florida State not scoring any of their runs today as earned runs. Beecham lifts it towards the edge of the dugout. It gets into that seminal dugout. Alex is a hitter. What's been the toughest part of Walker's game, do you think, for the Knowles at the plate? Well, she mixes velo so well. She flips that change up in really in any count. And so as a hitter, you just have to commit to a pitch because you know at some point you're going to get both pitches that she has, something more firm in the zone, and then that changeup just floating its way through. Beecham, right field, got some carry to it off the wall. She wants three, and she's got three. Beach and goes the other way. We saw her do it yesterday too, Aria, in an 0-2 count, taking this one. I thought that might be a home run for a second. We know Florida State's been missing the long ball, but Jason E. Beach uh, getting something started here for the Knowles. Love that approach, 0-2 count. It's so hard as a hitter to have extra base hits and counts like that when you get behind quickly, but Jason E. Beach is so good. So much hand-eye coordination in the box. True competitor on the field. It'd just be the spark of life, too, that Florida State needed, fans included. The tying run is at the plate. In the form of Janai Kerr. Marissa Young, who calls the pitches for Duke. Quick conversation. Kerr 0 for 3. She did reach. On an error in the fourth. This is high. Behind Kerr is Kaylee Harding, who has worn out Blue Devil pitching this weekend. That one just misses. And it's three and oh. a good take for Janai Kerr, but I'm just not really sure where that pitch missed. Maybe a little up in the zone. That was a close one, but nonetheless, ahead in the count now, thanks to that call. You give her the green light? No. <laughs> There's a strike. Not because I, I don't believe in her, but just not in the situation you're chasing two. You don't want to swing yourself out of the situation here. Make her throw more pitches. Yeah, that's why you're here. <laughs> Here's a three, one. To that off speed, Kerr trying to stay as patient as she could. 
Fouls it back, it's three and two, a full count. Kerr, who has been remarkable with runners on base this season. See it there out of your bug. Kerr's also been a 385 hitter with two outs. Walker's got her in a full count. Just misses. A little high. In that win in game two, evening up the series. See if she can do it again. First pitch strike. Walker gets ahead. Harding five for eight. Threatening to score, but then Amina Vega says, nope, not right now. I'm going to go lay out and make runners in scoring position. Not a lot of production offensively with hitting, but has done a great job leveraging some really good speed on the base path, some timely bunts. When I say hitting, of course, I'm meaning swings, right? But using the short game, good plays there. Applying the pressure to the defense, I think, has been the hardest part for Florida State to try to respond to. Davidson, Vega, and Burgess. Three, four, five spots of this Blue Devil order. Duke trying to win a series over Florida State for the first time ever. This would be a big box checked on a season of hopeful dominance from Marissa Young's group. Saw their 21 game winning streak snapped yesterday. As Davidson walks on four pitches. And I asked her, a team that's won 21 games in a row, when you lose that first one, sometimes it can be shocking. I said, what's the approach? And she said, we've just, we thought about burning it down mentally and we're starting fresh, we're starting anew. Let's start a new streak. You have to, right? You just gotta look ahead. You gotta learn from the stuff in the past, but you can't sit there and dwell on it. No great athlete has ever dwelled on past performances, but I think it's safe to say that some burn a little more than others, and that's those learning experiences that we talk about. Yeah, and Lawson's opening circle has been a difference maker all weekend long. And you compare and contrast the two programs, right, this season. Duke's been able to throw Wright, Kurd, and Walker at you. Florida State's still trying to figure out who's gonna step up as the team's ace. I couldn't agree more, but then you've got a fourth arm for Duke in Drug Mueller. And she's not gonna play roles right now, but still, she's got the experience. And we talk about it, experience is sometimes the hardest part for athletes to get, because it means exposure and getting opportunity in big moments whether it works in their favor or not, but experience is the best teacher. Good eye by Vega, count evens. In many ways, it's a Florida State team still trying to figure out their identity and who they are here with Team 41. Duke feels pretty confident in knowing who they are. Hit hard base, knock Vega. That's the ninth hit of the afternoon for Duke. And for Vega, it's her second base hit here in game three. And Duke just continuing to tack it on. Quality plate appearances, doesn't matter how they find their way on base. Walks, short game, nice singles through both sides. I think that's been the craziest part to me so far. Aria is there's only been one extra base hit for Duke. Still putting up five runs across the board. I'll go back to it again and again, but the clutch base running by Deanna Jennings, I think proving to be the difference maker in so many ways. No doubt. We've seen different elements, right, of this Duke team. We talk about what's their strength. Feels like this weekend, they've kind of shown you they have different strengths, all in different moments. 
when they've had to have it. Even yesterday, I thought defensively, they played really well to keep the game close and give themselves a chance. They might smell some blood in the water here in the top of the seventh. And I think they're sitting there thinking to themselves, hey, this is the third arm that we've seen for Florida State. Let's see another one and let's keep challenging them, see how much depth they have. I want to put as much pressure as I can in the circle. Really see what you're made of. We talk about it being a chess match. It's strategy. It's game management. And Duke just being better so far in innings one through six. Just having a really good day, too, at the plate. A couple of base hits, a walk back in the fifth. She's been a big contributor so far to the Duke li lineup. Here's the one, two. Burgess caught a piece. I think on the broadcast, you could hear the slightest ping of the bat. And it'll stay. One and two. Talk about a close one. Talk about Burgess being a big contributor out there to the offense, barely getting just a nick of that one. It wasn't a, a ping, it was more of a doink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a doink. Watches that one down two and two. leadership, experience, Def Flaherty. Being both of those things for Florida State out there in the field. A lot of inexperience around her has contributed to the Knolls in so many ways. Not putting up the numbers that she's used to right now, but still there, still present. a good pitch from Danley. Just change up up in the zone. Getting just a bit too high. Not getting the call to go in her favor. Swing and a miss. Danley changed planes that time and gets a big strike. And that's tough. You go up in the zone with the off-speed pitch and then respond so quickly with the drop ball down in the zone. Getting good bite right there at the end, too. Talk about velo change, talk about plane change. And that one working on good access there. Moving the ball. On the ground, step to third, throw across. That is huge for Florida. That's almost dating back 12 years now. Counting this season, of course. So just talk about dominance and talk about so much talent coming through the Florida State program, but also now with those numbers on the line and those timelines on the line speaks a lot about the talent coming into the ACC as a whole, something with Marissa Young in particular and what she's been able to do with the Duke program still in its infancy stages, if you really think about it. It's really good stuff all the way around. If you're a Florida State fan, of course you love that kind of dominance, but then if you are just a softball fan, you love competition and talent increasing across the country, specifically in conference. It's two and one, it'll be Ross, Torres, Edenfield. Seminole dugout, anxious, anxiously waiting. Marissa Young said it before the weekend. We've got to learn to finish as a program. Get over the hump. Can they finish in Tallahassee here this weekend? The Seminoles are hoping for some Joanne Greff field magic. 
They've been known as the Cardiac Kids before. It's a good 3-1 pitch from Walker. Ross has been on base twice this afternoon. Full count offering from Lily Walker. Oh, it hits Ross. Amaya shakes it off, smiles her way down to first base. The Knolls bring the tying run to the plate. And Ross can fly at first. And big opportunity there for Maya Ross. I don't even think she cares that it hit her. She's gonna say, nope, doesn't hurt. We need a base runner, so I'm gonna hustle down the line. That's kind of mindset right now that Florida State needs. To be out there, compete, big moment, pressure is on the line, games on the line. The best players love these kind of opportunities and want to be the one in the box. Issa Torres has had a flair for the dramatic already this season. Had a walk off against Texas Tech back on February 10th against former Seminole assistant Craig Snyder's group. Torres had seven RBIs last weekend in Fort Myers at the FGCU Spring Break Classic. She's trending upwards. It's a big spot for the Rook. And the thing too, I think right now is just not putting any additional unnecessary pressure on yourself. See the moment for what it is, pitch by pitch. Just try to stick to your plan. Torres waited back, fouls it off. Two-time high school All-American, a top 10 recruit. Torres has been a winner since she picked up a bat. That one gets in between the legs. Ross goes down to second. Torres had struggled with it. That's Kelly Torres with Issa Torres at the plate. Love how Florida State's getting fired up about these opportunities here. You got the dirt ball read right there. Amaya Ross easily gonna get over to second base. A little shock action, too. A shout out to Courtney Sinus. Gave a nice little speech to the team. Hit hard. Gold's got it. Throws across one away, and they keep Ross at second. <laughs> and Duke has had a couple of hiccups today. Three errors on the board, but look right there on a gold just positioned perfectly towards the 5-6 hole. If she's playing straight up, I don't know that she makes that play, definitely not as easily. It looked pretty routine from where she's standing right now. That's just the smart level that Duke is taking their defense with good pitching in the circle. Edenfield first pitch swinging. Fouls it back, she's two for two. In the seven hole this weekend. Seminole's trying to reel in a walk-off victory. Nice pitch, strike two from Walker. Gotta work here, let's go. We're good, let's go. Let's work here, let's go. Over the first baseman's head, it'll score a run. Edenfield will round second. She's going to third. Throw to third. Diving stop by Gold. And the Knolls within one. Michaela Edenfield coming through clutch. That's a little bloop single right off the bat, you think. 
However, Michaela Enfield has other plans right there, just gonna get completely fisted right off the end of the bat, taking it down the right field line. Running the base as well. She knows it's a double immediately. And then there was a slight hiccup out there in right field from Zampa, who has now entered the ball game for Duke. Always finds the new girl, but Enfield taking full advantage. Florida State fans, team in the dugout, everybody's fired up. Walker is done. Back to Jayla Wright. Duke needs two outs. Florida State make it. Say it wasn't always Jayla Wright's performance by any extent. The airs in the infield didn't really do her performance justice. A few unearned runs being pushed across home. Four errors by Duke. First pitch, Way Casers winging. And honestly, probably best case for Duke there that it falls foul. And then the catch is not made by Zampa. It was deep enough, and how tough of a running catch it would have been for Zampa. You probably would have got the sack fly there. So all it is is a strike 0 and 1 to Way Case. Blue Devils with four errors have allowed Florida State some life. What a stop from Torres. And I think we need to touch on that for just a second, too, Aria, the errors, because. We had three going into Enfield's at bat. That ball right off the end of the bat that she hit was going to be a double, but the error on the play in right field allowed her to advance to third. This is outside. Two and one to Hallie Waycaser. She's 0 for 3. Duke does have the infield in, trying to cut down the tying run at the plate. This is a moment that Marissa Young wanted to see Jayla Wright get exposed to. It's like postseason, she said, we need to be prepped and primed for opportunities like this. And Jayla Wright definitely getting that postseason feel here in an atmosphere like Tallahassee. The 2-2 two -two to Waycaser. Hit hard, it's scooped, it's gonna tie the game. Florida State keeps this game alive. Vega didn't have a play at home. Did the smart thing. Gets the second out of the inning. But these Knowles, these cardiac kids, they have that never say die attitude. And we will play on. What a big at bat for Florida State right there. Coming through big, clutch moments. Pressure is on, game on the line. Wake case are getting it done. Nice little situational hitting opportunity there. Vega, oh my goodness. She's been SportsCenter's top 10 all by herself. Two heading into the bottom of the seventh. Florida State was able to get to a cross. So we will play on. What an opportunity here for us to be able to call these games. We're so lucky. Right on brand here. Nice little St. Patty's Day. Nothing better to do on a Sunday than be up in the booth watching some great softball be played. a good catch by Marissa Young there. Making sure that everybody knew that Zampo was gonna be getting, or I'm sorry, Freelick back in the box now. Getting the at bat. I, saw, yeah, I was gonna say we saw Zampa come in and have an opportunity to play right field. 
Unfortunately, of course, the ball finds the new girl. Quickly getting hit to her, but then Freelich coming back in to get the AB here. Pressure is on. Duke trying to put a couple more across the board if they can. Flaherty trying to stay with it on her knees, not in time. That was a tough play for the senior to make. Diving to her left. Her own cause. Baker trying to advance the runner. Baker does run well, so she would have made it a challenge at first base. I love the rights running there at first base. I <laughs> know, I don't know if I'm loving so. it or a little worried about it, because you obviously don't want to see anybody get injured right. running the bases. The 0-1, right, caught in no man's land. Ooh. Hurried back in. Edenfield just stared her down. Alex, it's all hands on deck here for both teams now. Hey, when your number is called, you got to be ready no matter what the role is that they're asking you to play. One one coming to Baker. He's going to shorten up again. Gets it down. Beecham to first. Clarity covering. Advancing to second is right. That's good fundamental softball. Getting the sacrifice blunt down. Giving up your at bat to get people moving and over in scoring position. Baker doing just that. There's Tapia. She puts it down, that's a good one. It's gonna stay fair. Single for Tapia. Now, Duke's gonna test Florida State. Uh, Danley just unsure of herself right now. Oh, it works out for Duke, how about that? Run comes home. That was a game of cat and mouse. And the Noles just a little indecisive there, not sure of what they wanted to do, and, and it burns them. Danley, a freshman, not put in that situation quite often, probably in her career. Florida State defense taking it upon themselves to call timeout and try to regroup here. And you see the inexperience of Ashton Danley just not working in Florida State's favor. And I'm say of Danley, but at that moment, I'm you know sitting up here in the booth thinking to myself, somebody's gotta take charge, tell her what to do. Def Flaherty, take control, tell her to get back in the circle because the problem there too was Danley continued to float outside of the circle, holding the ball. And once the pitcher gets back in the circle, runners have to make a decision to retreat to a base whether that's trying to retreat back to the base that they came from or advance to the next base, they have to commit at that moment. So the longer Danley stayed out of the circle, the more Duke could try to juke her a little bit, and they did it. That's tough. Duke's emptying the kitchen sink. I'm a fan. You do whatever it takes to get out of here with a W. It doesn't matter. Find a way to win. Find a way to get a run across the board. Duke's doing it. A lot of small ball. And truly, Florida State hasn't handled it well, and that's why you keep doing it. The Knowles have struggled Absolutely. in the infield all weekend to figure it out, and so give Marissa Young a lot of credit. You found your advantage. You got team speed. Until Florida State does something to show Duke that they can field those plays. Duke's gonna keep trying to go into the small ball. Somebody's gotta step up. High and outside to Deanna Jennings. 
thing that hurts Florida State there is you didn't report an out. And Tapia's at second. Marissa Young and the Blue Devils deep in their back. See if, what, if Florida State and Danley can just keep this thing in a one run deficit. Danley having a lot of good learning moments right now. Again, full exposure, game on the line. This is a huge matchup. And as a young freshman, your number gets called. It's a lot of emotion. Swings of momentum have been palpable. That's a big strikeout there for Danley. She's had some success with the drop ball down on the zone. And that's the pitch that ends up getting Jennings there. That pitch going down right in the zone so well. It's going to be complemented nicely, too, by that changeup that's going to float up through the zone. So again, changing planes. Working north to south, effective for Danley. Circle, get back in the circle, and they have to do something. And so Dev can't do it because she can't vacate the base. And if she vacates, then they easily get to second, right? And then you've got, again, look around you. A lot more inexperience, and it's hard. You've got two freshmen on your left side with Beecham at third, and Torres at short, and then Amaya Ross over at first. And although she's more towards that upperclassman, she's not had a ton of playing time. You don't see that every day, that no, type of play. You don't. And you don't really practice those, I can tell you that, because your time's being spent most of the time elsewhere, right? On balls in the gap and things, learning where to throw when runners are on base and balls are hit deep in the park, but not so much on just the flat out base running game. Here's Anna Golds. She's at a 1-0 count. Now 2-0. Latapia at second. Two down in the inning. That's a big strikeout, though, for Danley to respond after all that craziness. Getting a Jennings who've been so good today. She's giving Florida State a lift, too, out of the pen. That went in there for the strike. Just one earned run for Danley. And now three plus innings pitched after starting in game one and giving up five hits and three earned runs in those four innings. Duke switching up their approach here in the third game. From that first game, when Danley saw him. I like it. I like that Duke has just really continued to apply the pressure to Florida State using the short game. And we keep talking about it, but it is. It's so effective. And until Florida State defense can prove that they can make those plays and get the outs, I mean, I think Duke continues to leverage that and see how long it can work in their favor. Powers and foul. Nice grab. I'll have the glove. <laughs> Still counts. It really is a great place to watch a softball game. Joanne Graff Fields at the Seminole a Softball Complex to center field, Kerr diving grab, could not hang on. Another run's gonna score, Gold gets into second base. And clutch hitting from Anna Gold, just taking that 3-2 pitch. Getting her hands around it. That one more towards the outside part of the plate, but Janai Kerr trying to lay out. Doesn't come up with the catch. You have to think, Arya, if she stays on her feet, does she make that grab? She was almost playing in a great position there. A couple hard steps, and I felt like she has the speed to close ground. That's a tough one. And that's where you start to see things unfold for teams, especially teams lacking some experience. Florida State being on that side of the field right now, lacking the experience out there. Of course, battling a couple of injuries. Kerr not having played as of late, but still. Davidson driving it out of the park.
big for her squad. What feels like closing the door right now for Florida State to have any hope headed into the bottom half of the inning. Blue Devil team would not be denied. Numerous times Florida State has fought its way back. And each time Duke has had an answer. That was Davidson's second home run of the weekend. Little dribbler rolling foul by Vega. And we thought we were missing the long ball. We knew it had been a while since we'd seen anything leave the park. A lot of short game today for Duke. Some balls in the gap for Florida State, but neither side having hit anything too deep. Davidson, of course, almost right on cue. Three and two. Beecham and Kerr. The deficit a lot larger now than it was in the bottom of the seventh. Hit on the screws, the right to Torres. A four spot here for an extra inning win and a series victory over Florida State. And a couple of key players for Duke so far. Claire Davidson continues to be clutch. Amaya Burgess having a good day. A couple of hits for her. Saw some signs of life for Florida State. Michaela Enfield getting things going for the Knowles in the bottom of the seventh. But a quick momentum shift for Duke. Puts the game in their favor right now. Scoring four in the top of the eighth. Three of them, Aria with two outs. This is two and a one to much. Your Florida State, you can't get it all back in one swing. That's a good swing from much, her third hit. That's how you would draw it up if you're Florida State to begin the inning. Haley Mudge continues to have a solid day at the plate. Look at the hands on that one, just driving them down in the zone. Beautiful piece of hitting right now. Kaylee Mudge is so consistent for Florida State. Senior leadership, I think so much of that has to do with the maturity out there on the field. I'm sure she's feeling right now like they've got nothing to lose. Throw back in a first after the strike to Beecham. Jason E. Beecham has been on base four times, every plate appearance. So 
couple of hits. One and one. And it took Duke a little while to make the adjustment to Danley in the circle for Florida State, but definitely capitalized as much as they could there. Top of the eighth, going into extras, but Florida State looking to adjust that mindset and approach off of Jayla Wright, who's been so consistently good for Duke throughout the season. Right back to the circle, Wright. What a pick. That saved an error. That was Baker, the shortstop. Out of Wright's hand, that one went straight to the dirt. And it definitely saved an error, any kind of extra base production there, getting any kind of 60 feet for Kaylee Mudge, out by a couple of steps, but it also helps Florida State's cause with the double play not going into effect there, because you know that Mudge has some speed down first, but Duke definitely could have turned the double play on a ball like that hit firm by Beecham. It's almost like he felt a rally getting started with Kaylee Mudge, leadoff single, and then quickly momentum shifting back to Duke with that ball. One in there for a strike. Side two and one. It's a curve. Hey, you gotta beat everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Now yeah. three and one. Jayla Wright trying to challenge the Florida State hitter, seeing what she can get them to swing at out of the zone. That's a nice four-run buffer, definitely helping her cause here to be able to work deep in counts. There's a walk. That is the third walk for Wright. So the Seminoles have two aboard with one down. Clean up hitter, Kaylee Harding with Amaya Ross. Due up behind her, Issa Torres. Nobody better to be in a situation like this than Kaylee Harding just continued to be clutch for Florida State throughout her whole career. Putting up some decent numbers so far this season. Hitting almost 350 on the year, a couple of home runs. But looking for some big moments right now, the ability to change the game for Florida State, tack on a couple, trying to chip away at the lead. These are the defining moments for athletes that get the exposure to games like this, atmospheres like this, looking ahead. Sometimes it's so much less about the right now, but more so for May, for June. Popped up. Staying in the infields. Tapia records out number two. Just Amaya Ross left. Jayla Wright and Duke looking to finish things off. I want to thank our cameras all weekend. We're here today, Aaron Garvey, Lawton Robinson, Daniel Scott, Jacob Varga. All doing a great job here at the Plex. First pitch strike back in the control room. Luke Broderick, Kirby Kander all weekend. Emily Peters on the bug the last couple of days. Shout out Luke, who's been running font for you as well. Tucker Pierce, Ethan Burdett. It took an entire effort from everyone at Seminole Productions this weekend to put on multiple events. 
with baseball and softball going on at the same time. Not to mention spring break. A lot of students out of town, not available. And I know I'm biased a little bit, but nobody in the ACC, and I've done national TV games with all schools, does it better than Florida State. With cameras, with control room, and with putting on broadcasts on ACC Network Extra or linearly on ACC Network. We talk about the softball program being the queens of the ACC. <laughs> Sempro runs supreme in the ACC in control rooms and in TV production. In between the legs, both runners will advance. Ross not wanting this game to end quite yet. Trying to prolong her at bat as much as possible. Getting ahead in 3-1 count. Challenging right to throw her something over the middle. Ross fouls it off. I always get the goosies in moments like this. The butterflies I don't think ever left my stomach anytime I stepped on the field to play. Big moments, no matter the lead, no matter who you're facing. The pressure is on the target right now on the back of Duke, so I think they were feeling the pressure. Florida State wanting to challenge them as much as possible. Coming in at a top five team across the country right now, they've been looking so good. Florida State knew they were gonna be one of, if not the best competitors that they're gonna get to play the next several weeks. It's been a fun series so far. Full count, hit hard, Tapia squeezes it. It's a fair ball, she steps on the bag and the game is over. Duke gets the job done, they come to Tallahassee. Well, hold up a minute, they're gonna review to make sure this game's over. Robbie Guest gonna look at it. I wanted to just disrupt your closing right there. Oh, they killed my call. <laughs> Robbie Guest just killed my call. That's okay, get it right. But for Duke's social media team, I apologize. Could have been a lot better. Not going out without a bang here in Tallahassee. Gonna make it interesting nonetheless. You see Ross, I think what's interesting too, I think that ball bounced foul, it's first bounce. Now whether or not it crossed the line back fair, I'm not exactly sure from my angle, but it did look like it got dirt on the other side of the bag. Hey, at this point, what does Florida State have to lose? At least asking the question. And the out recorded. Call upheld Duke for the first time ever wins the series against Florida. Yo, let's take a moment to appreciate The ones who heal us when we're not feeling great They're the ones in white coats With stethoscopes saving lives, giving hope Never losing scope From the ER to the operating room They battle illness, dispelling gloom With steady hands and hearts of gold They navigate the chaos, bold and cold they're the healers, the guardians of health In the face of adversity, they stand with stealth Grip knowledge and skill, they fight the fight Keeping us strong in the darkest night In the midst of pain, they bring relief With compassion and care, beyond belief They listen to our woes with empathy 
prescribing remedies, setting us free. From pediatric boards to geriatric care, they show compassion always there. With expertise and dedication, they strive to keep us healthy, to keep us alive. They're the healers, the guardians of health In the face of adversity, they stand with stealth With knowledge and skill, they fight the fight Keeping us strong in the darkest night So here's to the doctors, the unsung heroes Whose hands hold lives like precious kilos In the symphony of healing, they play a part Mending bodies and souls with love and art 